Europeans at the supermarket. On average, we spend a sixth of our disposable income on food, drinks and tobacco, a good deal of which comes from Europe's four million farms. But as well as what we spend at the shops, through our taxes, we pay for a system of farm subsidies worth 55 billion euros a year. But where does this money go? For decades, this was a closely guarded secret. This is the story of how a group of journalists and activists fought governments and powerful farm lobbies to find out the truth about who gets what from the common agricultural policy. What got me interested is really the amount of money that's in it. This is taxpayers' money. It, uh, it was at the time when I started to work with it, the largest single lump on the European Union budget. We have had decades of public money being sent to these policy fields and to the farmers and the businesses who in implemented these policies without real public scrutiny. For me, transparency is very important for democracy. There is no democracy without transparency. And uh, I discovered that we have to fight for transparency here in the Brussels bubble. And EU policy is very important. Um, there's a big debate in Europe about the, the common agricultural policy. And uh, it's not a very well-informed debate because most people assume that, th that this money, if, if they're favourable to the common agricultural policy, they assume this money is going to support the rural environment, it's going to support small farmers. In fact, the, the big payments are going to the big players and they're going in some cases to American companies that are investing in Romania to uh, introduce factory farming methods. Now that's, uh, they're doing nothing illegal, it's all completely proper, it's in tune with the laws, but um, I don't think it's what most people expect from the common agricultural policy at the moment. When there is given the impression about a policy that this policy is in order to protect our small farmers so they don't have to leave the countryside and so on. And then we actually see that large amounts of money are sent to wealthy landowners or old nobility families who have had large lands for generations. Then all of a sudden the, the, the policy arguments or the political arguments and the reality do not correspond anymore. And that's a place where I, as a journalist, have to come in and do a story for my readers, for the taxpayers who, whose money this is. The project has brought together journalists, researchers, NGO activists and computer programmers in an unusual and groundbreaking pan-European network. Normally you don't want to um, uh, share your research with the uh, NGOs and uh, people with a political background or anything, but uh, deciding that we can work together on getting the data and then everybody can use them for their own purposes so we are not uh, binding us to uh, any conclusion or any political view, we are um, keeping up the independence. If we as journalists want to be true watchdogs, if we want to be this counterweight to the power which is concentrated in, in the European institutions, we have to think European as journalists as well. We have to follow the story across borders rather than just thinking in our own little country, in our own little national target group. For most journalists, it's pretty inconceivable that they will be able to spend several months on a, on a story, visit the countries uh, two or three times. Uh, and therefore that, that's why it's extremely important to have the, as much information available as possible in as easily accessible form as possible. To make the enormous amount of raw data we had obtained more easily accessible and all in one place, we decided to build a website that would allow anyone, anywhere, access to the information at the click of a mouse. I think it's what uh, Manuel Castell said a few years ago. It's that, of course, the internet is a worry, and ICT is a worry because it enhances government capacity to monitor citizens, but go internet is a great opportunity because it enhances citizens' capacity to monitor government. The biggest challenge making a website like this work for users is trying to make the data easily searchable um, really quickly so that people don't have to hang around waiting for the data to load. From a technical perspective, it's, it's a really nice challenge having to take this much data and make it, make it so fast and so accessible. I think um, by having the transparency, it is driving this 
this move, this political move, to make the distribution of aid much more um, fair, but at the same stage, much more justifiable. And my hope is that, that through this action, through the new transparency, aided by farmsubsidy.org, we're going to see a change in attitude in a lot of member states about this culture and this idea that if it is public money, it's only fair that you show the public how the money is being spent. I can see all of a sudden people are talking about it. Ordinary people who don't know that I've been involved in the disclosure of this, they start talking about the farm subsidies, about the policy of the European Union, about the spending. This is what we want. We want the transparency in order to make the the people, the, the voters, the basis of democracy, give them the tool to think about what they want and to make a qualified vote the next time they vote.